is God. The book of Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. He says, call unto me. What will I do? Who is speaking? God. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Glory to God. Now go to the book of 2 Samuel chapter verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 1. Everybody look up and read with me on the screen. The Bible says, And there was a famine or famine in the land or in the days of David. Three years. How many years? And the Bible said that this famine came year after year. Somebody say year after year. And... And what did the Lord do to him? The Lord did what to him? The Lord answered him and answered and said, It is for Saul, for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the church of God say, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, tonight, to this morning, we just want to thank you. We honor you for your word. Bless the ministration of your word and give us understanding. And Father, we pray, oh God Almighty, that you will confirm your word preached with signs following. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God say, Amen. The Bible say, call unto me and I will answer you. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a generation that do not want to pray. They do not understand. I don't know if it is because we don't understand the need for prayer. The title of my message this morning is the prayer of inquiries. The prayer of inquiries. Uh, I want you to know that the only uh, thing that will put and give you victory in this life, uh, as a child of God, one of the major weapons is prayer. One of the major weapons is what? Is prayer. God has left the medium of prayer as a means for the believers to come before him and to call upon his name so that he can give them answer. This is the means that God has left for us. Jesus came here as a man. He was born as a human being. The Bible says that God sent his son and became a man so that he would die for humanity. And so Jesus was sent here as a man. Jesus was born as a human being. When he was tired, he slept. When he was hungry, he ate. Jesus became a man of his power, the glory that he had in heaven, his placement in heaven, all the only whatever he was, omniscience, omnipresent, all powerful God, he stripped himself of all those and came to the earth as a man so that he could feel what we feel. He could think the way we think. He will face the same situations we face. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 4, 6, 16, that we do not have a high priest which is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted, yet he was without sin. So Jesus came as a man. But something amazing happened that God in the flesh will always go away to pray. God in the flesh will always take time out to seek the Father. Why was he doing so? Because that was the mother and received answers. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. Anything I do is what I receive from my Father. And I receive it during prayers. Can I hear an amen? The Bible says in Luke 18, 1, that unto this Jesus was telling a parable that unto this end, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray because the place is the place where we stand in our authority. It is the place where we commune with God. It is the place where we receive answers from God. It is the place where we are strengthened. It is the place where we go from glory to glory. It is the place where God speaks to us. It is the place where we receive visions and insight. Can I hear an amen? Prayer is the place of empowerment. Every time you go into prayer, you are changed into the same image. From glory to glory. As we sang this morning, by the Spirit of God. Somebody say amen. And so, people do not understand the place of prayer. And that's why we don't pray. This morning, I'm not going to be talking about the prayer of asking for things. This morning, we're going to be dealing with the prayer of inquiries. Prayer of what? Inquiries. Now, church, I want you to know something. That only people who ask questions with God receive answers. 
Can I hear our name members alone? It's only when you ask questions. Now, there's a difference between questioning God and asking questions. For instance, in the Bible, an angel appeared to Mary and said, you're going to have a child without a man. This is a virgin woman. And he says, you will have a child. Mary asked a question, very sincere question. How shall this be, seeing that I have not slept with a man? And the angel said, the power of the highest will come upon you. And you will conceive a child. And that child, his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save the world from their sin. So you can ask genuine questions. Now that is different from questioning God. Questioning God is when you go through situations, you begin to ask God, Lord, why me? No, why who else? The Bible promised us that in this world, you will go through trouble. Okay, let me talk to this side. I said in this world, you will go through trouble. But Jesus says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world of his power to hurt you. That means whatever trouble you go through, guarantee that I'm there with you. For I will never leave you nor forsake you, that you may boldly say I am your helper and I'm not afraid of what men can do to me. So God promises that he will be with you in trouble. The Bible says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more eternal and exceeding weight of glory. For we look not at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are what? Temporary. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. The Bible says there is no temptation or trial or test that has come to you, but is also common to every man. He said, but God is faithful. One thing you must count on is God's faithfulness. That whenever you go through trouble, he is faithful. Am I talking to somebody? When the devil attacks your help, God is faithful. I said, when the banks come to take your car, God is faithful. When you lost your job during this COVID-19, God is faithful. When your child is misbehaving, God is faithful. When the enemy throws you all kinds of trouble, I said, God is faithful. The Bible says God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted that which you are able to bear. Now look at this. God did not promise that you will not go through tests. What he promised that I am faithful to make sure I will not allow you to go through what you can handle. You remember the case of Job. The Bible said that Satan came when the sons of God was gathered and they were gathered together and God began to brag about Job. Have you considered my servant Job? That this man is a man that hates evil and he does right and he's a perfect man in heart. And the devil said, ah, is it not because you have blessed him and you have protected him? Put forth your hand and take all those things. Look at what God said to Job. You may take all that he has, but his life, you can't touch it. Now, listen to me. Job was struck with sickness, but yet he didn't die. Can I say something this morning? It is not sickness that kills people. It's death. It's not sickness. Please, can you listen to me this morning? It's not sickness that kills people. It is death. That you have been diagnosed of any sickness does not mean death. God said, I give you permission to inflict Job with sickness, but his life you can't touch. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I am here to declare to you that you will see 2021. The devil will not take your life. You will not die by accident. You will not die by gunshot. You will not die by assassination. You will not die by ritual killers. Somebody shout amen. He says, so I want you to know that God did not promise us that we will not go through things. We will go through things. But the faithfulness of God says that you will not be tested beyond what you can handle. So whatever you are going through right now, look at your neighbor say, you can handle it. Oh yes, don't kid yourself, don't commit suicide, don't give up, don't quit, don't throw in the towel because the grace of God is upon your life to handle that test. I said the grace of God is upon your life to handle that tribulation. The power of God is present with you to deal with that circumstance. Can somebody say amen? So God will not allow you to be tested beyond that which you are able to bear. But the Bible says God will with the same temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to handle it. 
So God will always make a way of escape. Whatever you are going through now is temporary. Oh, I said it's temporary. Your troubles are temporary. That situation is not going to last forever. Am I talking to a believer? So, the Bible speaks of this man called David. I want to talk about David. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 1, the Bible says that there was famine in the land. When David took over, as famine came. And then not just that there was famine, first year. it happened the second year, it happened the third year. And this man began to wonder, how can there be famine in the land of Israel? It's not supposed to be. God's people are not supposed to go through famine for a long time. We are covenant people. We are a people of covenant. We have a promise that our father will provide for us. According to Philippians 4.19, that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And then we also have a promise in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 that thanks be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We have a promise from the Father. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, the Bible says, He that spared not his only son, but delivered him up for us. How we live through, not through him, freely give you how many things? Give you how many things? He said he will give you all things. In 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17, the Bible says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded or trust in uncertain riches. Why they should trust in the living God who giveth us all things. How many things? Richly to enjoy. God gives us all things to enjoy. It's not the will of God that you... Am I talking to a believer? Please, there are things you must not do. God is not the one that killed your child. God is not the one that made you lose your job. The devil is the one. Hey, am I talking to believers? In John chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible tells us that the thief cometh not but for to kill and to do what else? Steal and to do what else? And destroy. That's his, his manifesto. That's his vision. That's his assignment. And he walketh about seeking whom he would devour. That's his assignment. It's not God. God wants to bless you lavishly. It doesn't take God anything. So David and the children of Israel went through famine. First year, David said, no, I call her. This is not supposed to be. Second year, yeah. Third year, David said, no, something is wrong. I don't know. You know, church of God, sometimes you look at your life and you're like, ah, ah something is not right. You see, anytime you see cycle of pain, God is not involved. There is an ancient devil. I said there are ancient demonic altars that have infiltrated the lives of men in our lives. And you have to understand how to deal with these things. There are things that not all prayer can handle. Can I hear an amen? You see, David was faced with this situation. And the scripture says, David watched this year one, year two, and year three. And then he went before God. He didn't find this famine. Satan, I curse you. I command this famine to go. All those are prayer. Those are prophetic prayers. There's prayer of asking God for things. He says, ask and you shall receive. They, all those prayers are there. It's prayer of petition. There's prayer of agreement. But this time around, David didn't pray all those prayers. Now, the reason I'm saying this is we are coming to the end of 2020. It is time for very sincere questions. Lord, why am I going through what I'm going through? Why am I stagnated? Why haven't I re received a promotion in two years? Is that the will of God? Why, I mean, some of you ladies, you, you can understand what I'm saying. Because you see, as a young woman, men come to you. Number one has come, decided to date you. You guys dated. And when things were about to get serious, they took off. Number two men came. The same process. Just about things, when things are about to get serious, they take off. Number three came. When things were about to get serious, they, how many of you know something is wrong? 
Don't take that for granted and say everybody experienced it. No, not everybody. There are ladies who the first men that proposed to them married them. Okay, let me talk to this side. So, so you need to now begin to ask questions. That is the time now that you begin to do the prayer of inquiries. Lord, why am I stagnated? Why am I in this position? And let me answer you something. Let me guarantee you something. That any time you ask God a question, he will answer. The only challenge is, are you ready to wait? You see, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary and run and not faint. You must be ready to wait. The problem is this generation have no patience. And we enter into prayer. Uh, Pastor, five minutes prayer is okay. The Lord can answer me in five minutes. No, you are not serious. When you really need answer from God, you must be ready to sit down. If it takes one day, if it takes two days, if it takes one month, you will wait until he tells you something. Pastor Lohani, where is the amen? amen? Church of God, all I'm saying to you, you must be ready to wait. This is a generation that takes their cell phone to prayer. Why they are praying? Asking God, why am I not married? They're looking at Facebook, WhatsApp. God can answer you that way. When you really want to do business with God, you put away everything. Okay, let me talk to this side. Church, have you ever, have you ever been in a place of silence? Please, I want you to do it. These are things that we do. Ask them, in the office, Wednesdays I shut down because I need to preach. I don't want to see anybody. I want to hear God. You must learn to be si decide one day I'm not going to talk to anybody. You will say nothing to anybody but only God. Do it one day, two days, three days. I promise you, God will show up. The problem is you talking to too many people. Your life is too busy for God to speak. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Some of us are not still. David was going through a cyclical problem. And he said, no, this is not normal. How can I be dealing with this? And he went to God and said, Lord, why are we going through this? Somebody called me sometime early this year. And she took in the first time. She's not a member of our church. She was going through this with her husband. She called me and said, Pastor, when I get pregnant, I will dream of a certain person. The moment I dream of this person, I lose the child. Ha. First one. He dreamed again. She took him. Dream again. Dreamed of the same person and lost the child. The third time, that was when she came and called me and said, please, I need your help. What can I do? To ask her a question. You see, because some of those kind of challenge, if you are a pastor that does not hear God, you can't handle those problems. You need a man of God that when you are talking to him, he will hear God. The Holy Spirit said, ask her a question which I don't want to administer here to everybody's ears. But I asked her the question and she answered yes. I said, that's where your problem is. No matter what you bind and lose, that thing will never stop. And I gave her instruction. But the last instruction, she said, I cannot do it. I said, okay, no problem. You can't do what? I can't do it. I said, that's not my problem. You have told me, I've told you the solution. And until you are ready to do it, that's your problem. So sometimes you must go before God and find out, Lord, why is my life like this? Why am I like this? As a single woman, you desire to get married. Lord, why am I not getting a husband? Say amen. Why am I not? And then God can point out to you that your character is terrible. Okay, you see now, when I said that, all of you are quiet. Because you see, you want to marry a man, no man can tell me what to do. You are not ready for marriage. As long as you are a woman, the Bible says the man is the head of the wife. And the church say, Amen. If you want to square your shoulder and say, you will never tell me what to do. My friend, stay single till you die. In the name of Jesus. And God will love you that way. But if you are ready to get submit to your own, I, I have defined that word submission to you. That word submission is two words. It's sub and mission. 
The word sub is the word under. That's where you get the word submarine. The boat that goes underwater. Amen, somebody. Amen. So, so if you want to be married, you must stay under a man. There is no two heads in any marriage. It's the man. Yeah. You know, every time I preach this, the African woman just freeze. <laughs> Pastor, what are you saying? My friend, if you want to stay married, you must submit. And he commands the man to love the wife as Christ loved the church, that he was able to die for her. That means, husband, you must sacrifice your life for your wife. You were shouting amen now, but your amen has dropped volume. Amen, somebody. Uh, love your wife as, as Christ loved the church, that you are, you are able to die for her. You must go to every extent to protect your wife. To, to, oh God, to take care of your wife. I mean, I can't understand a man who wakes up in the morning and say, baby, if you don't give me money, me, I will cheat. Oh, if I catch you, I will slap your teeth. Look at you. The Bible says if a man does not provide for his own household, especially people of his house, he's worse than an infidel. You know how I described it for them in the marriage counseling class that just finished last Monday? I said to them, do you know that God will have more respect? God forbid for an arm robber, an, an arm robber who goes to steal to provide for his house than a Christian who will sit down at home and not provide. Now, arm robbery is wrong. It's against the word of God. But I'm trying to tell you to the degree that God will hate a man sitting down and do nothing and wait for the woman to go work. My friend, get up. Get up. Man up and square your shoulders. Do what it takes. Am I talking to a believer? I came into this country 21 years ago. Beloved, there was no job. People were telling me that the only thing to do is drug dealing. I said, I will never touch drugs in my life. I don't know what it looks like. I will never do it. And I went to look for job for these people that sweep the road. God, I'm not lying. When I married my wife, I had a small public phone in the street. Because I needed to do, my wife married me by the public folk. You know, today I look at women, they are looking for executive director. The CEO. Lord, I will never marry if the man is not a PhD holder. My friend, the blessing God will send to you may not come with PhD. He may come cleaning toilet. But 20 years later, an executive, oh God, am I talking to a believer? The blessing God will send to you may not look like what you think it will be. Am I talking to believers? Here am I, 21 years later. You know how many countries my wife has traveled to because she's married to me. Everywhere I go preach the gospel, I take my wife. I, look, I'm not saying my wife wouldn't have been great. But there is a possibility that that time when I was broke, if she said no to me, by now. In fact, I told you there were three suitors. The one she, she because the one that was richest among us, the guy had a Mercedes Benz. I had what? Legedis Benz. My legs were my transportation. And so, the guy with the Mercedes, after my wife and I got married, he died two years later. So by now, she will have no husband. I'm, you see, church, some of you, they th I pray God opens your eyes. I said, I pray God opens your eyes. It's not all the time. All that glitters is not gold. Oh, can I hear amen, Basalwan? All that glitters is not gold. Look at where we are today. Look at where we are. That nations will be calling us, come and preach to us. Nations. Nations. I went to preach for an American in the United States. And he said to me, when I finished ministry, when he saw the kind of power that was present, he said, ah, man of God, you people in Africa have it. You have what? You have it. He says, we, our brothers here, they are all smoking and drinking. Pastors, oh. Uh, he says, you guys have it. You have the raw anointing. 
when he saw demonstration. Church, you, you better, please, I pray God help you. Some of you, God has sent you your vision helpers. And they didn't look like vision helpers. Sometimes opportunity comes in cover all. It does not come in suit. Okay, let me talk to this side. Sometimes, and not in suit. And because we are looking at the wrong thing, we have missed God. And so the Bible says, saw the situation and began to inquire from the Lord. Lord, why are we going through famine for three years, year after year? Why? And I'm glad he went to God and asked. Church, as we are entering 2021, it's time to ask God some questions. Lord, why am I where I am? Why is my business crawling? Why are the doors of nations not open to me? How can somebody else be having so much breakthrough and I'm not? How can we be introducing? In this year, we have wedded almost 25, 30 people in this church. Lord, when is my turn? I have been praying. It's been my 12th prayer request year after year. What is wrong? Lord, tell me. I want to know. And God, if you ask sincerely, God will tell you. I have asked some questions. I told you of the time when I was so broke. When I, I had not, I mean, it was bad. When me and my wife got married. To the point where I borrowed money from my wife's ex-boyfriend. But that's, hey, yeah. try it. If you can. <laughs> my wife's ex not you know, when I tell the story, it looked like, it looked like science fiction. It looked like sci-fi. No. I didn't have rent. The only person who can assist us is a man my wife has dated. My wife said, you will call him. Hi. Alabo Shabada. I have gone to all my friends. No one. I say, Roy, a brother needs help. Guy is a good guy. I've met him. Good looking guy. Has beard like me. No wonder my wife told me to keep my beard. You know when I'm a, uh, when, <laughs> when I met my wife, I used to shave clean. So it was when I met Roy, I said, hey, that is the secret of this woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. When, she, when we got married, she said, do you have beard? I said, yes, of course. I shave every time. I said, Can you grow your beard? So I grew the beard. <laughs> So one day now, I met Roy. I said, hey. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. But I mean, I went to borrow money from my wife's ex. And the guy is married with children. He's living his life in Durban. So I called him and Roy deposited 2,000. Look at the kind of money that messed up your man of God. 2,000 rest he deposited. And at the end of the month, I paid him back. Because they were about to lock up our, our place. Now church, how many people will stay married to that man? So I went before God. I said, Lord, I am a child. Listen to this, please. I beg you, pay attention. I said to God, Lord, this is not right. How can I be back? I don't know whether Roy is born again or not. I don't know. I didn't ask him. You can't be asking somebody you are borrowing money from. Are you born again? He may keep the money. I need to pay my rent ASAP. Can somebody say amen? So I didn't bother all those questions. I just took the money, paid my rent so they don't lock up my door. So I said, God, how can I be borrowing money from this person? I don't know whether they are saved. And I'm a child of God. How come? Lord, I am not eating. I went on a three days dry fasting. My wife is here. When I married my wife, she had this small box of this radio or record, they call it, very round with, you know those ones that have cassette in front and CD on top. So I had a CD on financial prosperity by Bishop David Oyeriko. So I played that cassette over and over in my three days of fasting. And I, I can't remember praying so much, but I wanted answers from God. How can I be broke being a child of God? And on the third day, I heard the Lord say to me, my son, you are not consistent. Hey. 
you know, let me tell you something. When you are in problem, you don't want to hear the problem is you. You want to hear the, you know, like Adam, it is Eve. Like Eve, it is serpent, the serpent. We always want to pass blame. But that day, God said to me, my son, the problem is you. You are not consistent. And I began that day to serve God with my finances. I don't joke with my tithe. Once I get paid, I remove the 10%. Because sometimes you pay, sometimes when problems come, you take the money to solve problems. I began to honor God financially in my finances. And in exactly one year from then, I became a millionaire. I'm not joking. I was running a bit. I started my business at that time. And things began to happen in our lives. Things began to happen. My business was tightened to the ministry where we were. I don't joke with that. Because I've seen the secret. And God began to promote us. But why? I ask questions. Lord, why should I be borrowing money to pay rent? A covenant child of God. Why? How can I be struggling like this? And I told God, I said, Lord, if this thing is not working, I'm ready to be an arm robber. Anything I must do to feed my wife, I will do it. And I meant it. But God saw my sincerity that this boy, he needed answers. And he gave me the answer. And when my wife is here, that day she came back. She opened the door. I said, baby, we will never be poor again. Yeah. I knew it. I knew I caught something that would change my life forever. Church, I want you to please go before God and ask questions. As the year gets to an end, ask questions. Some of you need to take out time. Lord, why is my business crawling like a, a, a tortoise? Why am I crawling? Why can't I be promoted for five years? What is wrong? Why is me and my wife always fighting? Ask God. Because it could be your stubbornness. It could be all those secret things you keep on your phone. And all those pictures you look at. It could be all the things that you do secretly. Sometimes your sin may not have to be seen by everybody. But God sees all things. And let me tell you, you have somebody called the accuser of what? Brethren. The devil is a lawyer by nature. He's a what? He's an attorney. In the courts of heaven, when he comes, he brings your fire. You are asking God for a car. He will open the fire and say, look, this one. How can you bless this one? Look at this, 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 this. And then you begin to plead cases. That's how the realm of the spirit works. There are some things you will not get deliverance from just because you are a child of God. No. 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 There are some ancient things that your forefathers did that you may have to denounce yourself. Because according to that contract that your great-grandfather signed many years ago with the devil, he signed it and sealed it and said that no women, I am covenanting that all the daughters that will be born after me, none of them will have children. And then you are born 400 years later and that covenant is active. Let me tell you something. When the devil said, I walk to and fro through the earth, it does not mean Satan walks from Kibla Park to Reese Park. No. Satan travels from the present to the past. He can go 100 years earlier to look for something that is against your family. All I knew this before. All my grandfathers are Sangomas. Only my father was a Christian. And he fought to his teeth. They fought my father. And we, we, we entered into all kinds of covenants. I remember one day at the age of, I was a little child, about six years. My, grand, my father used to go drop me during holidays with my grandfather because our father was a Sangoma. He used to drop me at his house and I would spend time with this man. I would watch him prescribe, you know, conjunctions for people. If you come and you say, it's cheating on me, he will tell you, go bring white, white chicken, go bring white feather, or go bring this, go bring that. He come, does a bracatabra, throw stones on the floor and tell you, your husband, he can't look at another woman. These guys are serious. I remember him those years taking me to a stream at midnight. I was a little, I was so scared. He got there. All you are hearing is frogs. I say, what is this? Little boy, I will never forget that experience. 
and I was standing there. My grandfather walked away. Only me was, I don't know where he went for 30 minutes. Jesus. The fear that caught me that day. That's why even when I'm dead, I will remember that man. Unfortunately, he's in hell now. That's the truth. He never gave his life. I can't remember. Except God sent a preacher to him before he died. But as far as I'm concerned, that man is in hell fire. Amen, somebody. That's why you need to preach to your relatives. Don't keep this salvation from them. Hell is real. I say heaven is real. Hell is real. When God gives you an opportunity to talk to somebody, please share the gospel with them. Because no man knows the date and the hour. So I grew up in that environment. Now, came when I was 23 years old. I got born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And now, I sat down and I began all those things that I went through with my grandfather. And I knew, boy, if you don't deal with all those cases that Satan has filed away on your behalf, all those rivers I went, I don't know what they took me into. I went on eight days of fasting. How many days? The first three days I didn't eat, I didn't drink water. After the third day, I began to drink water for eight days to deal with those things. Otherwise, you will be crawling. You will put hand here. You will sell tomatoes with another person. The person becomes a millionaire. You, your business is going into minus. You will change the business. That's why people are running from one business to another. Tomorrow, you go and sell cell phone. And you think it's the product. No, it's not the product. There is a file in the courts of heaven that said those things. I went on eight days fast, laid hands on my stomach and said every covenant my father entered, my grandfather entered, my great-grandfather to the generations behind, they entered on my behalf. Lord, I break it off my life. That's what I did so that I can go forward. There's a lot of things, especially the African man. We were born in voodoo and in muti. All our, if you look at most of you, you know what I'm talking about. If you look at two generations before you, they were involved in some kind of muti. It's seldom you find an African man that came through life without a generation or two or three before them having to put hand in evil and dedicated things to altars. That's why you must really, church of God, take your life seriously and ask questions. Ask God questions. Why is my life like this? Why am I not getting healed? Lord, why is my business not going forward? Why is every time in this time of the year, some of you know that there are certain things that happen cyclically every year in a certain time. In September, every September, you go through the same thing. Something is wrong. Can I hear David asked a question. And the Lord said to David, David, you are not the challenge. You are not the problem. There is a predecessor before you. His name is Saul. What is Saul? Saul killed the Gibeonites because of zeal. 700 years before this day, Joshua, in Joshua chapter 7, entered into a covenant, Joshua chapter 8, entered into a covenant with the Gibeonites that nobody from Israel will ever kill a Gibeonite. <laughs> nobody from Israel will ever what? Kill a Gibeonite. So they entered into an agreement. Church, God is a covenant-keeping God. You see, hey, God. Lord, help me to pass this message. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing out, but it is, it's not coming out the way. God is a covenant-keeping God. That's why your, your generation now, you are serving God. A lot of the things you are doing now, the sacrifices, what you are doing, will transcend to your next generation. Your generations to come. Listen to me, church. I've shared this before. One day, those years when I was in Rema Church, my business was doing well. I was running the property business. And Rema used to have Easter services at the dome. Where? The dome. You know, not, not gate dome. Right. So Rema used to gather everyone in Rema Church 
at that place for Easter service. So we went out to clean the dome, to arrange seats, and we were all gathered there. So as we were arranging chairs, cleaning the place, the voice of the Lord came to me. He said, son, feed everybody. I say, I say, Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. Feed how many people that were cleaning the place? You know, Rema is a big church. Over 500 people. The Lord said to me, I should buy everybody lunch. What? Lord, what did you smoke? Which brand of cigarette or daca did you smoke that I will buy lunch for everybody here? And the voice kept coming back. Buy everybody lunch. Buy everybody lunch. Hey, God. So, I remember I left the dome. There is a shopping center close to the dome. There is a Nando's. I went to that Nando's and said, can I order uh, uh, chi chips and, and quarter chicken and cold drink as a combo for 400 people? When they calculated it, it came to 51,000. How much? I brought out my credit card. I swiped it. I said, this God, what kind of human being are you? I swiped that card. And they delivered all the meal to everyone. As I was driving out from the dome, I was on the freeway on N3. Is it N3? Down towards the south. Is it N? What? N1. As I was driving on N1, I heard the voice of the Lord. This seed you sowed is not for you. When you get home, lay hands on your son. For this seed is for his destiny. And I got home, I called Kion. He was a little baby, he was a little boy. I laid hands on him and declared the word of the Lord that he told me. That's why I know that boy will never be ordinary. You see, Kion, he will never. Sometimes when we say do things, when God tells you to do anything, don't keep it. Don't keep it. Because he's he wants to transcend those things to your next generation. This seed is not for you. Don't ask me for harvest. That harvest is going to your son. David said, Lord, why are we going through this? He says, it's because of Saul. Somebody ahead of you broke covenant. He broke a covenant. And now you are suffering from the covenant. And David now asked God, what do we do? He went to the Gibeonites and said, guys, we have offended you. What do we do? They said, give us seven men from the house of Saul. David spared Mephibosheth because of his covenant with Jonathan. And he brought seven men out of Saul's house. And the Gibeonites slaughtered them. And God removed the famine. Oh, I tell you. You know, church, you must understand the systems of the kingdom. I mean, in Joshua, as I close, Joshua chapter 7. God in Joshua chapter 6, the children of Israel had just crossed Jordan. And the Bible says in Joshua 6, 1, that Jericho was greatly sealed up, strictly closed. Nobody going in, nobody going out. And Joshua, in the, when they crossed Jordan, I mean, he now came out. I don't know whether to spend time with God. And he saw a man with a sword. He, took, he told the man, he said, my friend, are you for us or against us? I think that's Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. He said, are you for us or against us? And the man said, I am the captain of the Lord of hosts. He was an angel. He said, okay, this is how you will defeat Jericho. Go around it for six days, once every day. And on the seventh day, call the priest. Let them blow, blow the trumpet. Walk around Jericho seven times and say not a word. Please learn to be silent before God. I am praying for believers today. Please learn to be quiet before God. You talk to too many people. Some of you, if you don't talk to somebody in five minutes, you, your body starts itching. You have a serious problem. You must learn to be quiet. Be still. Wake up one body. I will just sit still. I'll be quiet. We are going on a long fast in January. That is that you need to set out to ask God a lot of questions. Ask God, even during this period, before the New Year's Eve, ask God questions. God will reveal to you. If you can't hear his voice audibly in your inner voice, 
in our inner man, he may speak to you through dreams. Say amen, somebody. On Friday night, we came here for prayer. And as we were praying, at the end of the prayer, I saw a black snake following one of our sisters. Just monitoring her life. The snake is not doing anything. And then she had a dream of the same black snake around her house the next day. But, church, listen. When I say to you, come to prayer, some of you sit there. You know, when we gather to pray, some of you are sitting at home. You're watching TV. You are, hey, God, if you know the forces we are fighting, if you know the things that you have to deal with, a lot of people's destiny have been bedeviled, and the only way to come out from them is prayer. And the Bible says, Joshua, Go the children of Israel. Go do it. And God gave them instruction. The angel said, don't touch anything in Jericho. Burn the city with fire. Only save Rahab, the harlot, that accommodated the two spies. The gold and the place in the treasury of the house of God. And the Bible says they did. But there was a guy called Achan. The Bible says that Achan went, took a bab he saw a Babylon. He took it and took some silver and gold and went and dug the ground in his house and hid it. And so Joshua chapter 7, it was time now to fight Ai. A city called what? Ai. Ai was a small town. Now, Joshua said to them, guys, let's not take all the military to go fight Ai. Just choose very few army, 300 people. They should, if we could defeat Jericho. You know, when God has given you big victory, when you see small battle, you despise it. So he said, no, don't take, don't take so many military men. Take only 300 men. Let them go fight AI. So the Bible said they went. <laughs> and when they got there, AI pursued them, killed 30 of them, and they ran out of AI. Back to Joshua. When, he got back, when they got back, Joshua said no. Somebody say no. Somebody say no. Listen to me. Every defeat in your life is not from God. It is the devil that orchestrated that defeat. Joshua said this should not happen. We are covenant people. Why should we be defeated by AI? And then the Bible said that Joshua went before God. Let me give you that scripture. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7, verse, uh, chapter 7. And let me see. Give me, uh, give me verse, verse what? Verse 7. And Joshua went before God and said, Alas, O Lord, like crying out. Oh my God, O God. Wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over River Jordan? You remember the... Joshua smooth Jordan and Jordan divided and they cross on dry land. And Joshua said, how can you bring us? You divided the river for us, brought us over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorite to destroy us. Would to God that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? Joshua was asking a question. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall, and, the, and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. What will thou do unto thy great name? Lord, for the name, for the sake of your name. That's another way to come out from this mess. When you want to present your case, you need to tell God for the sake of your name. I'm a child of God. Everybody knows in my family I'm born again. How can I not be married? How can I not be blessed? For the sake of your name, I call upon your name. Everybody knows I go to church. I'm a child of God for the sake of your name. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon your face? Israel has what? Israel has what? Israel has sinned. Why are you complaining or crying that nothing is changing in your life? Why are you telling me that 
You are, he says, Israel has sinned. That's also my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken what? They are cursed thing and have stolen also and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own staff. They have taken what belongs to me and put it among their own. They took their tithe and they put it among their expenses to give to me and put it among the money they should enjoy. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be, will I be with you anymore except you destroy what? The accursed thing. Some of you have a cursed thing you need to destroy. If you are having wires on your waist that your grandfather gave you, Mankulunkulu gave you, all those things, you have some, you are not escom. Don't wire yourself. Amen, somebody. If you still have some things they gave you from ancestors that you have in your house, those things are working against you. Say amen, somebody. You are a child of God. You should not serve idols. You are here and you still go to Sangoma? No. God and Sangoma don't work together. Can I hear an amen? My friends, some of you are going home now for Christmas. You're going to KwaZulu. You're going to Eastern Cape. You're going to all these places. You're going to get home and your mother will tell you, my son, we need to slaughter a sheep for the ancestors. My dear, don't slaughter anything, oh. Listen, if you're slaughtering a cow, a goat, make sure you are slaughtering it to eat. Not for the blood to be dedicated to somebody. Not for the animal to be dedicated. Am I talking to believers? Because some of you go now and you come back in January and bring me problem. All I'm doing, I mean, that's what pastors do. Damage control. That's all we do. You tell people don't do this and they go do it. Every day I'm preaching here. Under this kingdom, you are a child of God. You are not supposed to have sex with anybody you are not married to. And the church say, Amen. Amen. You are a married man. You are not allowed in this kingdom to sleep with another woman who is not your wife. Don't commit adultery. And the church say, Amen. But there are men here now who have a girlfriend waiting after service. That they need to go service. A second service. May the Lord deliver you from adultery. May the Lord deliver you today. How can you win? Behaving like somebody who doesn't have God over them. Church, it's high time that we take God serious. Take his word serious. I made a vow to the devil. I made a vow to God. That no woman, 21 years ago, when I met this beautiful damsel, no woman will see my nakedness. And I guarantee the devil that until I die, no other woman will see me strip. Beloved, there are things you say to God, God will take you serious. One of my sons said to me one day humorously, he said, Daddy, only you can make that kind of covenant. Me, I'm scared. I say, oh, he's not sure of himself. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. You better be. Listen to me. There is a place for zeal for God. Oh. For God to do certain things for you, he needs to see zeal. The Bible speaking concerning Jesus, he said the seal of the Lord's house has consumed him. And Joshua, immediately the angel told him, he said, gather all Israel. And they began to ask questions. When he got to the turn of the family of Achan, he said, Achan, did you take anything? Achan began to tremble. I did. I took a Babylonian garment and I hid it with silver and gold. You know what Joshua did? He said, gather everything about Achan. Gather him, his wife, his children. Gather his cow, his cattle, everything he has. They put them in the valley and Israel threw stone at them. And they killed them and buried them there. And the Bible says, God now lifted his anger against Israel. What am I trying to say today? Church, as we close this service, I want you to do a recourse of your life. The Bible says, examine yourself. Where are you in the scheme of events? 
Are you going to ask God why you are where you are? Are there things you need to stop? This year you have lived your life your way. Is it not time for you to live for God? Is it not time? Brother, you're living with a woman for five years. One year, two years, three years, four years. Why are you not marrying that woman? It doesn't cost you anything. Yes, you ought to pay your lobola to the family. But some of you, it's not lobola that's holding you. It's because you are careless with your life. A woman has given birth to you, first child, second child, third child, and you refuse to marry her. That's wickedness before God. Because one day you will look, find a 16-year-old damsel and leave the one that has given birth to because now uh, she has lost her shape. She's no more Coca-Cola bottle. My friend, have you been pregnant before? I, I pray that you get pregnant. You will know what it means to have a child. How do you want your wife to retain her shape after giving birth to three children? Yes, you can exercise to lose your stomach. You can do all those things. I remember when my wife gave birth to children, she runs straight to gym. I see her. One day, I used to go with my wife to gym. I sit down and I watch her. She will stay on the cycle. Me, I'm there sipping Coke. Because uh, I didn't get pregnant. Now, it will be wicked for say you have lost your shape. When I'm sipping Coke, she's on the treadmill. Man, don't be wicked, though. I said, don't be wicked. Stay with that woman. Love that woman. Marry that woman. There's somebody here. You need that could have been your daughter. Imagine a man spending 10 years with your child, dropping children every day and refuse to marry them. Please, let's be serious with God. This is time to take account of 2020. If you don't, you will regret it. I'm afraid to tell you, I'm your man of God, I will never lie to you, that if you continue the way you have lived your life, 2021, even though God has declared that I will restore you, I will bless you, I will increase you, that 2021 may remain the same as 2020. If you don't change your ways, every head bowed or eyes closed, bowed or eyes closed, bowed or eyes closed.